Hi, it's Kirby Summers, and I welcome you to my true crime podcast. Today, I am basically doing a preview here on a patron-only, very special podcast I did on Vicki Morgan, and in particular, about the people who surrounded Vicki Morgan And I go back into Alfred Bloomingdale's life before even Vicky was born and share some information that has never been shared before. I, hey, before I get started, I want to again, thank my new subscribers, your support here and your liking this video and your subscribing is really appreciated. And for those of you who have followed my work for a really long time, the only reason that I am not putting um, the information that I uploaded to my Patreon is because not only do I name names that have never been revealed before, I also disclose a lot more information about what was on Vicki Morgan's tapes and I, what happened is I, you know, I always have been researching her life. And the reason I've done that is because her life uh, has some parallels to my own life. And um, I always took offense when people called her a mistress because she was really a sex slave. Um, I know that phrase is new to a lot of you. And you possibly have become aware of it during the Jeffrey Epstein case because mainstream has referred to, let's say, Virginia Giuffre as a sex slave. But back when I was working on my memoir, The Billionaire's Woman, which a lot of you have already read, and you know, for, it's my understanding most of you have read it if you're following my work for a very long time, that was the only uh, word that I can come up with that... Uh, resembled my life because there's a difference between somebody's mistress and somebody's sex slave. And the difference is that when a woman becomes a mistress, she is romantically involved with a person and agrees to be part of his life in a very secretive manner. Uh, but there are genuine feelings involved there. The, the woman is usually in love with the man and there's that kind of relationship, okay? But in a separate case where I use the terminology sex slave, you are coerced into becoming somebody's toy in that arena and it forever changes your life. You are never the same. It cost Vicki Morgan her life. She was ultimately, as you all probably know, horrifically murdered. And in my case, you know, I've had three attempts on my life. Uh, my life was never the same after this man reckless forced his way uh, against my wishes, destroying my then relationship. And again, I don't want to get too much into details because it, I've told that story in my memoir and I did it because it was cathartic for me. And it really um, is the main reason I became involved in the Epstein story because the characters intertwine, intermesh. And even as I... Uh, relay uh, the information that has never been really uh, told before regarding Alfred Bloomingdale and uh, Vicki Morgan and Ronald Reagan and uh, things that happened long before he even met Vicki Morgan. Um, I found that again, we were colliding into People who are familiar to us, as for those of us who have really delved deeply into Epstein's world and into the world of the Franklin child abuse case. And as I always say, these are all interconnected. And so the information that I uploaded, I tried to be even careful on my Patreon uh, where it, I am less restricted, but I'm still restricted. So I just felt it was too um, 
hot of a topic to put here. Although I do have some information here on YouTube that's, you know, you can listen to on Vicki Morgan. And I've got some articles, I believe, on my Substack on Vicki Morgan, but I do not have the information that I included today. So what happened was I was looking through my files and I came across really old stuff that I had copied a long time ago. And I went to see if I could find it again because I try to keep links to information that I find along the way because at some point when time permits, you know, it's like, yeah, I, this is something I'm interested in writing in or, you know, sharing with you guys here on YouTube. And, you know, since I have the Patreon, sometimes putting it just on my Patreon. My initial goal was to share it here on YouTube for everybody because it's the holiday season. I wanted to do something extra special for you guys. But as I got into the material first, I went and it was gone. And I'm like, and I looked for other things that I had held on to with links and that too was gone. And I realized, wait a minute, there is something going on uh, about the Vicki Morgan case with information that really has not really been made public and information that a lot of us have not heard about before. And that may not even be in the books that have been written about her. And I thought, well, something's going on. In addition to the fact that we are all aware, of course, that information about Jeffrey Epstein has been scrubbed from day one, but there was some, um, there is some correlation in the fact that there is a, a contradictory story. Were the tapes really stolen from Vicki Morgan, you know, when she was murdered? Because they ended up, according to information that I thought I, I, I knew, they were in various places. Um, she was keeping this as her life insurance. Right. And apparently it, it didn't save her from uh, just being horribly murdered and, and not being able to defend herself uh, against this murder. Um, the information I had been holding on to was that there are still copies and there were at the time of when I found the information at the time that it's dated which was way longer before I found it, that the tapes continued to exist. Now, ostensibly they were shown to some of the major networks. They decided they were never going to release the names or information about the tapes and the story died. It died with Vicky, right? And I'm thinking that's kind of very similar to the Epstein case because the Epstein case was supposed to die with the death of Jeffrey Epstein. It didn't. We're still talking about it. But it explains why all of the people involved in the Jeffrey Epstein case were given uh, the same kind of immunity that he was given in the 2005, 6, 7, and finally 8 when he decided to show up and turn himself in and serve his part-time jail time. We're never going to hear about those men. Those men are never going to be uh, publicly shamed or brought to quote justice because this stuff has happened before. It happened even before Vicky's time. You know, like they there were names that were just never outed and there were like covert operations that have happened that you're aware uh, about however there are there is new information that i included there aside from the fact that the networks didn't want anything to do with the story uh, because of course who are they going to protect they're going to protect the the elite the same elite that we find ourselves confronting today right these people their dealings and their um, misogyny and their misuse of children has happened and it goes unpunished. What I did find, which I will again be probably uploading only to my Patreon, 
is, and th this um, is separate, although I kind of want to share this with you because I found it to be quite fascinating and it showed an aspect that I myself have been hoping to dive into, but you know, there's only a certain amount of time on, in everybody's day, but nothing has ever been written about or exposed about, let's say, the children who were abused in the Franklin uh, the cover-up ring, which you know is connected to Ronald Reagan's White House. As to the, the ones who made it into Hollywood, we know that some of Jeffrey Epstein's victims were also people who aspired to become models and or actors. And some of them actually were helped to become uh, what they wanted to become and were given roles, let's say, on TV series or in Hollywood films. In the Franklin abuse case, I think I was able to find at least two people who quote, made it to the other side, but who became predators themselves and who are very high level, nothing happens to them. Um, and of course, why does nothing happen to them? Because they are connected to the intelligence organizations, but they're like in Hollywood as you and I speak. And um, these tactics uh, have never been exposed. Uh, they And the reason that it came to mind is because, of course, uh, the Vicky scandal with Alfred Bloomingdale, who was connected to Ronald Reagan, uh, reminded me of the Franklin abuse ring, which happened at that time. However, in this podcast that I uploaded to Patreon, and I invite you to join me there because that's where I put all the things I can't put here, I do disclose information about stuff that Bloomingdale was involved in long before even Vicky was born, as well as some of the nefarious stuff that the men in his circle were involved in. I mean, this has connections, like deep, deep connections to the same people who were involved in the Rickless's life that I share on my Patreon. Uh, it's involved to even JFK's assassination, it's involved to, again, a number of select people connected to the intelligence agencies that we keep bumping into. And um, I had held on to this information. I didn't know when I was going to share it. And again, I was going to share it here. But when I reread the notes, it was just too explosive. And I don't want to take any chances here. I'll be uploading some other stuff here. Um, but I just could not do that with what I uploaded to Patreon earlier today. In the meanwhile, you know, do give this a like. It helps the channel. It helps me continue to share information. I will be uploading additional full-length uh, podcasts here in the next day or two. It's the holiday season. I certainly hope you're all doing well and that you're giving yourself some time off and not stressing too much about things and that um, you're all doing good. All right, guys, give this a like, subscribe. Thanks again. Bye.